you've probably used ChatGPT to write an email, but what if you could actually send that email without ever having to open your inbox? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna be building in this video today. We're going to equip a custom GPT with the ability of sending an email straight from GPT. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Matt Paiva. I build AI solutions for businesses, especially on the sales and marketing side of things. And I had this idea of building a custom GPT with the ability of sending emails a couple weeks ago, and I figured it out how to do it. So if you are an avid GPT user and you want to have that ability in your GPT, this is exactly how you do it. So why don't we start this video off with a quick demo. As you guys can see, I have the Gmail GPT open up over here and I actually like to prompt a GPT by using voice. It gives me a lot more flexibility, especially when I need to context dump. So let's say something along these lines. Hi ChatGPT, just write an email to mattpaiva.ai at gmail.com and ask if he is available for a dinner next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Uh, I've met a creator who wants to use AI to grow their business and I want to see if I can schedule a dinner where I can introduce both of them over on the phone. Um, that's it. And then we'll just click on check the check mark over here. I actually thought I was gonna contact them a lot more, but let's try this out for our demo. Okay, so for the subject line, it wrote dinner next Wednesday and in the body it said, hi Matt, hope you're doing well. I met a creator who's really interested in using AI to grow their business and I'd love to introduce you too. Would you be available for dinner next week at 8 p.m.? I think we could set up a call during dinner so you can connect. So in this sense, ChatGPT understands that I want to set up a call during the dinner. So here I'm gonna say no, I want to invite Matt and the creator to the dinner. And I'm just gonna say that and in hopes that it will adapt the email. And there we go. It adapted the email by saying, I think it'd be a great chance for you two to connect uh, and chat about the space. Now GPT even asks if I can confirm Alex's email so we can include them in the CC field. And sure, we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna put Alex at Alex Hermosi, <laughs> alexhermosi.com. And I'll ask him to CC him, please. And after I finished talking to our tool, which took like 10 seconds, it says the email inviting Matt and Alex to dinner next Wednesday has been successfully sent. Let me know if you need help with anything else. So we're going to go over to our email to check if that's true. And there we go. Here is the email that we used and we can see that we sent it to the correct person and we also CC'd Alex over here. Now, as you guys can see, this is a fake email and this address was not found, but you get the purpose of this tool. So to start us off in this build, we are going to use Relevance AI, which is a platform that helps you build AI agents. They also have tools that you can use in both Claude and custom GPTs. We are going to be building this tool specifically for GPT, but you are able to do it for Claude as well. And what you're gonna do in the first place is to sign up for a free account here in Relevance AI. And once you sign in for the first time, I want you to go over to your templates folder. And here, if you are not on the templates folder, just click on this portion over here and you'll be directed to this page. Now, what you wanna do next is to look up Gmail over here in this search bar down at the bottom. Let me just zoom in a little bit so it's a little bit clearer. And here we'll see that we have nine different tools that we can connect to our custom GPTs or to our relevant AI agents. And the one that we'll be using is the one called send email via Gmail. Just as a quick note, you can equip your GPTs with other tools like these ones, but currently they are having trouble using the ones that need to get emails. For example, if you're get, getting emails from a sender or getting an email to write a reply, we are currently having trouble uh, doing that with relevance AI. So keep that in mind. That's why we're going to include only this tool over here as of right now. Now, if you are building agents like I have before, and if you're curious on seeing those builds, I'll leave the playlist right over here. You can go and connect all of these tools to your agents and it will allow your agents to do everything from sending an email to writing a, a response to an email, to finding emails from a specific sender, to finding emails that you haven't read and everything in between. Now with that disclaimer said, go ahead and click on your send email via Gmail tool. And then once you log in, and then once you clone that project and you save that project, this is what you'll see. You will see the name of the tool. You will see a from Gmail account over here and from name. And if you expand, you will see all the other inputs that are available over here. There are a couple of things that we're going to do. First, for organization sakes, we are going to change the name of the tool. And here I will call this GPT send email via Gmail. And when you want to connect your account, you are going to connect it through here. If you've never connected an account in Relevance AI, you will want to click on add an account. 
And here you will just need to click on sign in with Google and select the account that you will use. And if you're wondering what account to use with your GPT, I would recommend using an account that has a paid Google workspace. And that means that you will usually have a custom domain, meaning it will be like Matt at the name of your company.com. If you don't want to use that, you can totally connect a personal account and you shouldn't have any trouble. But if you do, there is a in between step that you can create to allow different softwares to get access to the Google API. This is something that's super common to do for make.com. And if you have any trouble setting this up, I'll also leave a video up top over there that you can go and see how to do that process uh, in the background. But let's say you've already selected your account and let's go back to the computer. All right. So for my purposes, I will select this account over here, Matt at PivaSolutions.com that you guys can send emails to as well. And here I'm going to select the from name. And this is the sender's name that will appear on the recipient's inbox. So here I'm just going to select my name or I'm going to type out my name. And now we are going to do two very important things. First is we're going to set this as a default value. And down here we are going to do the same. So we're going to set the from name and the Gmail account as default values. Now, if you keep scrolling down on these other inputs, you will see that you can select a bunch of different things from creating the email as a draft all the way to like tracking if the email was open or not, or CCing people on that email and even getting the message ID and the Gmail thread ID for that. You shouldn't be too worried about that. We are going to include some information in our custom GPT that informs how to use this information, but we are mainly focused on the recipient email that we're sending this to. If we're going to CC anyone, the subject line and the email body, and that's pretty much it. So once you've set your default values and you've decided what they're going to be, click on publish changes. And from here on out, I just want you to click on going back and going to your tools part. So you just need to click on tools over here. If you've never built an agent, this portion should be empty. So once you click on tools, you will see this export tools over here at the top. Click on that. And here we will click on custom GPT actions. Now you guys will see that this is a very straightforward process. So the first thing that we want to do is to go over to our GPT interface. And for this, you will need to have a paid account, either a plus or a pro account to work the same way. And from here, you just need to click on explore GPTs. And when you click on explore GPTs, you will click on create GPTs. Now the whole thing about the GPT creation process won't be the detailed instructions or the knowledge base. It will be the actions that we import into our GPT. So just for context, I'm I'm going to name my GPT Gmail GPT and I will just go ahead and click on create a new action. When I click on create a new action, we will see this authentication step. And for this, we will go back to relevance AI and in relevance AI, we'll scroll down a little bit and we'll see that the first step or the second step asks us what tools we want to use here. Just select the exact same tool that you already had picked from before and scroll down a little bit further. Now in this portion, you will generate an API key. And then once you generate your authorization token, just click on copy and come back over here. And if you haven't clicked already in authentication, just click on authentication via API key and paste that information over here. Now to our next step, we are going to generate an open API schema and we're going to copy this over here, go back to our custom GPT, then you will paste it in your schema portion and you will click on this button that says format. Now, once you do that, you will see that the name of your tool will be down here. And this means that it is connected properly. Now there is a very crucial step that we need to do to test this out. So we're just going to click on test and here we will see that our GPT is talking to relevance AI. And usually the first time that you run this, it comes up with an error. So that's what we're checking for over here. There we go. So we got the error that I was talking about. And this error essentially just says that we don't have the O authentication ID for Gmail. And if you did the step by step correctly and you have set your email as default, uh, that shouldn't be a problem. So what you want to do here is say, try again. There we go. So it says the email was successfully sent. Uh, here's the message info. So if you go over to your inbox uh, with the email that you connected, you will see that you have an email that looks pretty much like this test email from Gmail GPT. And it just says that this is a test email and you'll see that it even attempted to send to example at example.com. Now we're going to go over to our prompting portion because we need to give information to our GPT about the inputs that we have. Okay. So in terms of our custom GPT prompt, there's some basic information that you want to include pretty much always. You want to include a role. You want to include a task and the tools that this has access to. If you have any knowledge base set up in this, in this custom GPT, make sure to uh, explain what that knowledge base is and how the GPT needs to use it as well. So for our purposes in the role, I wrote, you are a communication specialist. 
You specialize in email communications for businesses in North America, and you know all the best practices of writing professional and friendly emails. And under task, I wrote, you will help Matt Paiva, the only person using this GPT, with their emails. You will help him write emails for clients, coworkers, and business partners as best as possible. And then I wrote two little things over here saying, always clarify the goal of the email and try to keep emails short and to the point. Now, in the tools, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our actions or to our this portion over here under actions and you will see the available actions here i want you to copy the exact name of the tool that you have and you're going to go back to your prompt and paste the name of this tool and here we want to write a very brief description of this tool and if you want you can go over to the relevance ai tool that you had and copy it from the description over here now we can see that it says send a gmail uh, email with your google account can maintain conversation by providing message and thread id so this means that you are able to reply to any emails using these two pieces of information they're a little bit harder to pull if you don't have another tool in place but i will leave this description as is right now and now we're going to give some information on the inputs and in this process the easiest way to do it is to go over to the tool copy the name of the input and you just paste well you're going to write inputs first over here and then you just paste that over there so you paste the name paste the description and then here depending if we need something we can add a note so for example for this first portion where it's from gmail account the account oauth to send the email from and then it says this will also determine the from email address so here i'm going to put it in brackets always use the default value the next thing that we're going to use is the from name and the from name and even though we have selected a default value for that it is a good idea to give the same information so the sender's name in the inbox over here and then here we'll say always use matt paiva and I just say that it's good to keep this portion over here because as you guys can see on the test uh, Gmail that it sent out when we didn't have any information on the tool, it wrote the sender email as Gmail GPT. And if you're sending this to people that you work with, you want this to be your name, obviously. And then in the end, you will have a list with the inputs that looks just like this. I will try to copy this list and paste it in the in the description below or in the comments below so you guys can have access to this. But I won't make this Gmail GPT publicly available so you guys can access it because it's obviously connected to my Gmail account. And I don't want people sending emails uh, as me using a custom GPT. So I actually adapted the prompt just a little bit. I added this rules section, which already had the first two points about clarifying the goal and keeping the email short. And I added three other points that are related to our inputs. And here I just am reiterating the point of always use Matt Paiva from the from name input. I also added ask Matt if he wants to keep the email as a draft. And if Matt wants to reply to an email, ask for the message ID and the Gmail thread ID. So this will pretty much give us all the information that we need. And then just for fun, we're gonna include some conversation starters, which could be like draft an email to, and then here you can put the, the email address of your main client, for example. So you don't need to ask that every single time. And I'm even gonna change the wording to write an email to the name of the email. Another one could be reply to an email for me. Another thing that you could do, for example, could be write a weekly update email to send to, and then you put the name of your boss over here or the email address of your boss or, or whatever you're using. So the whole point of these conversation starters is to have a quick shortcut for these types of tasks. So if you are writing an email for your boss, keeping their email over here would be a good idea. Or if you are writing an email for your main client, keeping their email here would also be a good idea as well. Now, you'll see that if you don't know what to write in these conversation starters, there's no problem. These patterns will come up pretty quickly once you are using the GPT. Now here we can even add a photo and you can either upload a photo or use Dolly. And here just for fun, I'm going to include the Gmail logo over there. Now here you can click on create. And in this step, it's really important that you select only me because the tool that you have over here gives direct access to your email. So don't share this with anyone. Click on save. And once your settings are saved, you can just click on view GPT. So now that you've learned how to connect your Gmail to your custom GPT, you might be curious if an AI agent could take care of your entire inbox for you. And the answer is 
Yes, and I actually built that a few months ago and you can watch that video right over here. Now, if you want me to build any AI solutions for you in the future, feel free to contact me below. There is a link where we can book a free call. And if you want to get access to all of my free templates, you can also access those down below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.